Hello, dear viewers. In this second week of our series on life in New York, we will show you interview with a well-known painter in the United States, Mr. Natva Babsa. The interview took place in his beautiful studio residence located in Soho. The first part of the interview is composed of two brief chats I had while he took me around his residence. We more or less browsed in his house talking about how he paints, uh, what he feels about the art and the modern trend of American paintings and art and all these rather abstract artistic matters as well. We also have Virginia Locastro uh, with me today and after the interview we discuss the subject with her. Yes. How do you do, Virginia? Good evening. I hope that you, the audience, will be able to appreciate the rather unique paintings of Mr. Babsa. You will see many of them in the background. They are very colorful and very unique, and I hope that you will enjoy watching those paintings as well. Now let's see the interview. When you relax. Uh, I don't think it's a question of relaxing for me, because when I paint, I'm in total relaxed situation, ah. so my work is not like going to work from nine to five. So it's not Idea work, you know? work and leisure. Yeah, that's the I think it's, it's all that's inclusive energy. rather. Painting is a process where I fully, you know, uh, happily satisfy me myself. Yeah, very and uh, for me to person. go and play is uh, not a very separate mm -hmm. relaxation idea rather at all. Ah, yeah. That's very ideal, right? Yeah. 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 Well, you have a nice, anyhow, wonderful loft studio and uh, living put together. Oh, thank you. Uh, I guess the paintings, you know, which fill up most of the walls here, uh, to me, that is what make this place what it is rather, you know. Very often people come here and make a comment that it's a very beautiful place. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have works of various sizes. These are all works from different uh, periods rather, you know. Uh, painting right here is painted in 69 and was shown in an exhibition at the Jewish Museum called Beautiful Painting, you know. Uh, How long uh, does it take you, for example, to, to do this? Uh, the works painted here uh, are, you know, almost time is immaterial to me because each work takes its own time and very difficult to analyze exactly how long time it would take. A small work would take many, many days and months sometimes, and large work similarly would take, you know. Do you mean you continue to work on this? Uh, uh, no, it was finished in 69, but when I'm working on it, I work only on painting, so until it's finished, you know, so. But it's very hard to, you know, determine the time. Mm. If you ask me a particular work, how long it took, you know, then I can perhaps tell you, but in general, it is it's ah, not the time. I mean, this particular... This, this work was painted within, I would say, practically closer to a month period, you know. Mm. Yeah. It's a product of uh, lots of uh, labor and uh, creation uh, over I months. In, in, in painting, uh, labor is so entwined. It's a, it's a labor which uh, almost doesn't seem like labor, but you put in many, many, you know, strenuous hours yeah, painting yeah. rather, you know. Very often I would put in 18, 20 hours a day, mm -hmm. and to me it seemed like, you know, a few hours rather, you know, because when you are finished, you are exhausted. But during the process, you don't have that sense of time that you have spent so many hours. Mm -hmm. uh, I have done the larger paintings in my studio, are painted two or three months successively, 18 hours a day, non-stop probably for the entire three months period. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't have the sense, you know, that it's so much labor here, really, you know. <laughs> so, uh, this, uh, these works are more newer, recent works. Uh, they were painted almost uh, <clears throat> two years ago. Mm -hmm. The whole phase that uh, this work related to are very, very dark, you know. Mm -hmm. They have a dark mood. Not to say that it has a, any uh, dark in the uh, emotional sense mood, but they, they are very dense paintings. Uh, they represent the experience of space, which is quite quite magical, rather, you know. So, uh, this is all very, very pure, 
color that you can, you know, somehow mm. see. Look, look at this. They come into like this. Look at this. See how powerful the color is? Yeah. How beautiful and how good. You know, it has such a hue, and this is what has attracted me to paint the way I paint, that the colors themselves have so much power mm. to bring your full focus, full attention. Mm. And to me, what more you can have in painting mm. that oh, have yeah, such yeah. power, you know? That explains your theme. So, like, look, look at this, all these yeah. how, how powerful they are. I mean, like, when you look at them, it almost, you know, you're, you're, it's, like a, it's like most delicious food or most extraordinary, attractive, you know, even sexual, you know, aspect of it, you know? It, it has that yeah. notion to it. So you mix so, with oil? Yes. This, oh. this works, uh, are, all these works are painted with this kind of very, very pure pigments, layering, layers and layers and layers of this with glue-like medium applied between them. Like here, you see this. This is a very, it's a beginning point this of a, a canvas. canvas. This is a canvas, and I work like stretch like this. And then it is sub totally emerged with medium like glue. And all these colors are embedded layers after layers after layers for until I finish, you know. And this is all this work. Uh, this is a painting done in 1975. That's the year I had this grant. Huge, huge. Both these works were done, you know. Mm. It's a 13 feet by 23 feet size. <laughs> Very hard to maneuver, you know, around. Uh, this may be one of the biggest that you, you work? Uh, this is one of the biggest painting in terms of height. But lengthwise, I have painted longer paintings than this, you know. But it uh, gives you... Like, if you come close and just read them, that what you read closer to this painting. When you go a little further, your reading completely changes rather. You cannot see where it begins and where That's it ends right. rather, you yeah. know, somehow. Now, oh, Virginia, how do you write those paintings? Well, I'm not sure that I would want to have one in my house. Is but too big? Perhaps too big. Uh -huh. um, don't most, most Japanese find it difficult to buy a painting that big? Well, he has smaller paintings, too. Oh, I see. I'm, I I'm sure that you are mm -hmm. able to see some of them. Yes. But many of them is very, very big. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very beautiful color. This color is very fascinating. Yeah, that I agree yeah. with. Yeah. Since you were there in person, he says that he's very much interested in the power of color. Mm -hmm. Did you mm -hmm. feel that? Yes, because his painting is, in a way, nothing but color. Yeah. It's just color. That's and it's rather difficult to explain. And it's uh, very charming. And if you stand in front of it, you feel as if you are absorbed into the color. Mm -hmm. So, you know, some feeling of calm and quietness. Oh, so that's interesting. Very charming. Yes, mm. yes. Perhaps it comes a bit, as he says, from his Indian culture, because the saris that Indian women wear, mm -hmm. they're quite extraordinary sometimes with the deep reds and um, oranges and blues. Maybe yeah, he yeah. was influenced by that. That's right. Uh, about some of the expressions, uh, mm -hmm. he said that uh, to him, labor is so entwined. Mm -hmm. What uh, does it mean? That you can't separate labor and pleasure. Uh -huh. That they go together in the way that uh, when people are speaking, carrying on a conversation, mm -hmm. you can't really say one person's more important than the other. They work on it together. So probably for him, um, that's the way his, his work is. Ah, it's not work or pleasure, it's mm. together. Inseparable. Inseparable. Many factors are getting together and influencing each other. Right, uh, right, right. Also, he said that uh, when he showed me two of his paintings that are rather dark and dense in color, mm -hmm. uh, almost black. It is black and green. Yes. And he says, uh, this is the experience of space which is quite magical. Yes. What I've does it mean, it's magical? I'm not sure myself. I think that might be an example of um, his use of hyperbole, using mm -hmm. language in a rather poetic way, or almost the way one would, the language one would find in a novel. Mm -hmm. um, to me, it means um, something not quite of this world, something um, uh -huh. something out of the real world that we experience every day. It's somewhat mysterious. I think so. Uh -huh. So yes. it has nothing to do with magic? Mm, I don't think so, unless he's talking perhaps about black magic. 
I see. Oh, but that's right. Black magic. That's right. It's but, it's related to that. But that's another I'm question. Sure. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, now we move on to the continuation of the interview which we showed you last week. Your work uh, is very unique. I think you are the only one who paints this kind of uh, works, I would say. So in a sense, you are a school, uh, one-man school, sort of, a school by yourself. You know, I, I, I know any other painters, I know other painters who more or less uh, paints the, the work like this. So uh, what is the general theme or the overwhelming theme? Is it color or is it some subject that you like to reflect on the, on the work? Is, is that main theme that you always have in mind? Is that the color that uh, fascinates you most? Um, as we all know, no man is an island, you know. Uh, in that category, I am not separated from the whole, the world of art, you know, which goes all the way back to my roots, which are very ancient, mm. to if you look at the European history, which I am very well aware of. As a student, I studied extensively in the academic style and all that, and I'm very familiar with. When I came to America, uh, the, the advent of American art was as practically it was reaching its the, the height, the, the romance of art which is built up in America with the works likes of Rothko's and Pollock's and Newman's and Motherwell's and all those. Those people, uh, as I entered New York, I became so closely neat with that whole ideology of painting or that whole way of thinking of painting, a very romantic approach to creating a world of painting which has its own satisfaction uh, we never question when we go into nature how we enjoy nature. Mm. We just are hypnotized. We stand in front of just totally empty sky with a crescent moon in it without asking any question, what does it mean? And I think the experience of art uh, is so involving in that particular arena. It's a, it's, it's a romance with your universe, your aspirations, your, 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 your breathing something. A, a, a experience that you are breathing and living at the same time. Mm. Uh, my paintings uh, is the emergence of that kind of romance in painting that to me when I came from India uh, the saturation uh, from my cultural uh, advantage the saturation of the experience of color is so overwhelming but when I entered New York where I experienced something, something similar happening where painters the likes of Rothko and Pollock, they have created uh, a world which was rather quite unique compared to the history of European painting in a way that you did not have the title of the painting, you need, ha need to have experience of the painting. You are no longer painting portraits of known figures, you are no longer painting the historic anecdotes, you no longer were creating operic uh, sort of presentation, but you were breathing a, a sort of real, real, real fresh air of expansive openness, uh, the joy, the silence, the beauty. All these are almost, uh, the experience of art is so non-verbal in a sense that it's very hard to translate it. So it has always painted uh, works like this from, since, from the start? Since my development uh, of my own work, I came young to New York, I was 27, and I was still uh, exploring myself. And uh, in 65 in New York, I actually, in a way, emerged with my own work rather, you know. And uh, from that beginning, I have worked uh, exploring myself through this particular medium. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a whole approach of uh, the word uh, uh, purity may not really uh, be a proper word to use, but it is proper to say that my work tries to exclude what is not essential really, you know. I try to impose uh, a, a particular viewpoint on my work where I have taken out all the 
what we call skeleton, you know, in a sense, mm. because I feel that the experience itself is so, so important that you really do not need a artificial structure to, uh, to uh, perhaps explain to somebody work in a way. Mm. Well, the, there is obvious uh, strong Asian, I would say, style of influence in your picture, so your works should fit the Japanese building and the Japanese houses very well too, although I'm not uh, quite sure if we have enough space for your size. I think, you know, uh, for any culture, the kind of culture that you come from, which has art as its real, I would say, absolute, uh, what do you call, fu fundamental, you know, mm -hmm. beginning really. It has, it has through centuries caressed and honored art in the, the finest way, you know. To make space for something should not be issue. Yeah. <laughs> so, don't you have any... Yeah, we, we create space for our life, you know, always, you know, yes. Wouldn't you uh, start painting smaller works to fit the Japanese houses? Uh, no, I really, I do not believe in the fitting anything. I believe in expression. Expression mm -hmm. has no boundaries and uh, we have to make life uh, so fluid that we have to accommodate all our expression because that is the greatest freedom we got, you know. Mm -hmm. God has given us particular freedom and if we just simply give it up, we won't have anything left, you know. We no. should make our life so rich that we should uh, create place for our expressions, really. Yeah. No? Yes. So, not I would like to go into another area. Uh, I hear that art is sort of booming in this country. Is that correct? In what sense uh, is it booming, if it, if it is? Um, since I have come to this country in 62, I have seen incredible development in, in the interest of art. Uh, America used to lean very heavily on European art, that's, that's right. but mm -hmm. the American art became so, so much... Uh, now it's internationally recognized that America is center of mm -hmm. art, really, and um, that development is within my own <coughs> experience. I have seen it. It started in 50s. in the area of pop art, isn't it? No, 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 no not at all. No. In 50s, uh, the, the abstract expressionism grew here, mm -hmm. and that is what made American art the most acceptable, you know. The pop art followed it because, uh, you know, the Americana, which a lot of people love outside, uh, created pop art. But the, the, the thrust of American art has been very romantic. If you look at the Ashcan School or the previous landscape painters of America and from that to the whole abstract expressionist school, it is based on the, the, the grandness of experience in this country, the romance with the space, romance with the land, romance with the, the really openness. Uh, so in a, in a, in a sense, uh, the whole beginning was happening mm. just before I came, but it climaxed as I entered New York art market mm. particularly, and I had the pleasure of meeting all people who have become very, very well known, like Rothko's and Newman's and everybody such a pleasurable experience mm. to come from another culture like India, which is very rich and saturated, and to enter in a culture which is building up to I such see. a mm. such a height, you know, which is rather unparalleled in a way. So and from that onward, it has developed, it has, uh, New York has become the world center of art, you know. So you, you would <coughs> say you would be satisfied with the current expansion of the art world in terms of quality also? Uh, well, I think any center which becomes commercially uh, rather uh, intense, mm -hmm. it brings in also the bad part with it. Mm -hmm. But uh, nonetheless, it supports good art. Mm -hmm. uh, it has brought extreme amount of commercialism and a lot of vagaries, but that is uh, unavoidable. What happened to Paris, for example, that it became a great center of art, international art, but then in time it deteriorated, and I think that's a normal routine to, but New York is still quite vibrant. Uh, it has many, many phases which are up and down, but uh, I do not see, at least uh, at now, that any other center has emerged uh, which is promoting and supporting uh, on such a level art, really, you know. Outcome, however, is uh, making art very expensive and it is almost out of the reach of, of a common uh, like it is re it's really unavoidable. Uh, the process of making art 
is rather expensive because one spends the whole life uh, trying to make something which society obviously pays only attention when it becomes popular. Mm -hmm. So when you take the lifespan of artists, uh, when his works start getting acquired, uh, they have to satisfy, society has to pay for what it really wants. But I also uh, do see that, like for example, that a Japanese insurance company paid 40 million dollars for Van Gogh. That is unreal. That is not, that does not help art. That helps speculators. Uh, so that has to have the reality of prices uh, in, in accordance with what really in society we are willing to pay. We are willing to pay for an expensive couch, a lot of money. We are willing to pay for a condominium, a lot of money. Uh, we are willing to pay a lot of money for fine food. Uh, in, in that context, art requires so many months, so many hours to produce. Very often young artist does not get paid even the what you call minimum wages for his art. Mm -hmm. And it's unfair that mm -hmm. on one hand you can go and blow five to forty million dollars for so-called masterpiece which has been venerated and on the other hand you are not willing to pay hundred dollars for somebody's toil and sweat. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to really learn from this experience that there is a reality of art just like everything else in life and we should try to honor it in, in a proper mm. perspective truly. Well, you know? thank you very much Natva, yes. we enjoy very much your very artful uh, conversation with you and this whole environment of art in the United States in this very beautiful uh, area of Soho. Enjoy so, very much, thank you. Well, it's certainly my pleasure to be having you in my place and chatting with you and uh, I hope I look forward to one day visiting Japan you know I hope that to experience you will see it, yes. your works are displayed in uh, Japanese museum and Japanese homes too I look forward to that yes. thank you thank you well I very enjoyed talking with Mr. Babsa very mm -hmm. much it was rather unusual experience for me to talk with an, an artist Yes, I would and it imagine. was a little bit difficult, uh, frankly speaking, for a, a very mundane and worldly person like uh, myself to raise proper questions to mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Yes, because my experience, I think, in the past of speaking with a couple of artists is that they tend to be very serious about their work, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to know um, what to say and even sometimes to understand exactly what they mm -hmm. mean with their word choice. Um, for example, he uses this word non-figures, mm -hmm. and I was wondering if he if if he had an example of that when you were speaking with him. I didn't exactly uh, understand what he meant by that. As you saw, his works are all very abstract. Yes. It's just colors and uh, uh, space and uh, hue, as he say, and the mm -hmm. light very beautiful by itself though, mm -hmm. so it is not concrete mm -hmm. uh, like many of the artists, uh, like uh, impressionist artists like many Japanese people love. Mm -hmm. So when you talk about non-figures, it is not the paintings of a particular uh, people, mm -hmm. uh, very often a uh, portrait. Yes. Uh, I think that's what he meant. Yes, yes. Or perhaps still lifes where, peop where they have um, apples and peaches and pears mm -hmm. and maybe from a um, from if he doesn't like that kind of art he might say non-figure meaning that they're not real they're not they're dead things perhaps yeah. I'm, I'm not sure myself yeah, that's right mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Babsa said in the early part of that interview that uh, when I asked him about his mm -hmm. sort of style of painting uh, he said no man is an island Mm -hmm. Which is an interesting expression. I hear that uh, rather often. It is rather convenient too because it is true that no man is an island. Right, yeah. right. Yes. Do you know the source of this particular expression? I think the original source comes from John Donne. Um, poet. British poet. Yes, uh -huh. yes. But I think it's more commonly connected with Ernest Hemingway. Ah. His um, mm. novel, For Whom the Bell Tolls, the, f uh, the very first part of that novel, um, there is this paragraph or bit from John Donne's poem, and it ends, do not ask for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee, mm -hmm. which is another way of saying no man is an island. Mm -hmm. 
I so see. I think it's more often connected recently, at least, with Hemingway. I think we can use that expression in our conversation, too. I think you so. You can use it in many ways. Right. Uh, yes. Uh, we talk about the trend or the uh, tradition of uh, modern American art. Yes. You talk about space and the grandness and the purity. Mm -hmm. Could you sum up what he tries to say in explaining his style and his position in the American art? Yeah. Um, I think he's trying to say that he's a part of the um, mainstream of American art, of that of ab abstract expressionism. Mm -hmm. And I think he's also connecting it, or that whole school of art, with the geography and then indirectly the culture of the United States mm -hmm. because of the, particularly once you get outside of New York City and go west, driving west, mm -hmm. you can see the openness. Magnificent openness in the nature yes. of the American country. Right, ah. right. And probably that type of art mm -hmm. couldn't develop in Japan mm -hmm. where everything is compact and to right. tightly fit together. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope you enjoy that interview and you also enjoy his paintings. I hope that uh, many Japanese would enjoy, maybe buy some of his works too. It is really very good and I enjoyed it myself.